Wow, the propaganda merchants got themselves in trouble and it couldn't have happened to better people. High off their own lies and their echo chamber of madness, right-wing dork squads have come face to face with their natural enemy, the law. So a lot of you know about conservatives. They be lying. It, they, it's like their gym partner's a monkey, okay? Because they be lying. And now, the lawyer that took down Alex Jones is going for another payday for a victim of yet another coordinated hate campaign featuring Fox News, Newsmax, Tim Pool, Steven Crowder, Owen Schroyer, Hollywood Unlocked, Simon Ataba, and Today News Africa. And everyone's favorite neighborhood billionaire at the center of it all, looking dumber than ever. Today, my co-counsel Greg Alder and I filed a suit against Fox, Newsmax, Univision, Timcast, S Steven Crowder, Owen Schroyer, Simon Atiba, and Hollywood Unlocked for, falsif or for falsely uh, portraying our innocent client as a neo-Nazi mass shooter. Uh, on May 6, 2023, an individual began shooting visitors to the Allen Premium Outlets, a large outdoor mall in Allen, Texas. Uh, in a matter of minutes, five adults and three children were killed and seven other victims were wounded. The shooter was a 33-year-old far-right extremist. Garcia's extensive online writings adopted white supremacist, neo-Nazi, and incel ideologies. A really incredible thing about this is that this person actually watched Tim Pool and Steven Crowder. These people who came out to claim that their that their client was actually the person who was doing the shooting was somebody who actually watched their content and took inspiration for their content to commit that crime. This isn't the first time a mass shooter has taken on these people's rhetoric to be able to go out into the world and commit crimes. And if you think about it, it makes sense from the logic that these people are pumping out. I mean, think about it from Steven Crowder to Tim Pool uh, to uh, like many people on the Daily Wire. I mean, you just think about it, right? They're coming, they're coming to mutilate and kill your kids. They want to overthrow the US by flooding us with immigrants and destroy the entire country. We're at war. This is their ideology, that we're at war with the left, that they've stolen the election, and that elections don't even mean anything anymore because every single election is rigged, so you can't even vote your way out of this mess. Um, they, they have captured every institution. They are looking to commit white genocide against all white people in the entire country. Um, and there is nothing that you can do about it. Every single, every single, um, uh, institution used to stop them has been co-opted and is now, it is now taken for their own gain. You can't get a fair trial because if you're a white or a male, they're just going to throw you in jail forever anyways. Black people can kill you without, uh, like black people can kill you without regard. Some of these people even came out to say that if, I think it was Fuentes who came out to say that, was it him? Fuentes even came out to say that if uh, Joe Biden wins, then Joe Biden will send black people to his door to kill him. And then the black people will be let off because black people won't be, won't be held accountable for crimes that they commit anymore. Yeah, Tim Pool. Who, who inspired this guy to go out and kill people. Yeah, did this. I remember this from, yeah, from 10 months ago. Tim Pool calls Allen, Texas shooter pro-Nazi online footprint a psyop and blames mass shootings on multiculturalism. <laughs> Why in the world would I show appeal to Nazis? <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. That multiculturalism. And not the idea that people of all different types are holding hands under the rainbow. It's that you have different communities stacked on top of each other, next to each other, with widely different views that don't uh, that don't like each other. And then people who are crazy will do crazy things. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of it's kind of wild how you can say something like that live on your show, and then go, I can't believe Nazis watch my show. Like, obviously, Nazis watch your show, you weirdo, you dumbass. Obviously. Obvi everybody, everybody can see this. Because as I, I just, just, as just uh, you know, as I laid out, their ideology plays right into the hands of these, of these neo-Nazis, of these um, far-right, of, of these far-right crazy people. They give them their talking points. If you follow their logic to its logical conclusion, why shouldn't you go kill people? That's why what they're that's why what they're giving to people is so dangerous because it's very clear these people are just fence sitting losers who don't want to do anything in, in in like the real world um and follow and follow their own and follow their own teachings but 
there's a reason why their entire community is filled with people who 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 champion this violence. There's a reason why Tim Pool talks about how everybody who comes on this program is just shouting violence because at the end of the day, his ideology breeds violence. He's just too much of a loser to do, to, to, to try and do anything. But if you follow his logic, that is a logical outcome. That's why his logic and that's why his reasoning is so evil. Yeah. I like this guy. I like this guy's content. He's on to something. This guy's on to something. Very interesting guy. Very interesting guy. Garcia committed the massacre while wearing a tactical vest embroidered with the RWDS. That's right wing death squads patch. Garcia's body was tattooed with Nazi symbols, including the SS lightning bolts and a large swastika. These guys are always so political. I don't have I don't have a left wing tattoo. On the day of the shooting, no details were released about the shooter, but on the following day, media organizations tried to identify the shooter based on uh, based on the release of his name and date of birth by law enforcement. The law enforcement alleges these defendants, sorry, uh, alleges these defendants ignoring basic journalistic uh, precautions, and, a res- uh, and as a result, they accused the wrong person, our client, 36-year-old, uh, Actually, can I? I want to make sure I'm, I'm pronouncing this guy's name correctly. I'm not. I'm not Hispanic. Mauricio. Mauricio. That's a cute name. I like that. Hello, little Mauricio. Thirty-six-year-old Mauricio Garcia, who was not the shooter and does not share the shooter's date of birth. The first defendant is Fox News. The suit alleges that an article on Fox News uh, on Fox News's website recklessly featured an image of my client, identifying him as the shooter. There was no justifiable reason uh, to use my client's image as the shooter. The suit alleges that Fox News failed to exercise reasonable care in verifying the accuracy of the photograph. The second defendant is Owen uh, Schroyer, host of The War Room, who broadcasts an image of my client's uh, face on his show. Schroyer is well known for his guilty plea to federal criminal charges relating to his breach of restricted areas while leading a crowd of rioters at the U.S. Capitol on January 6th. I guess we know where he was on January 6th. Schroyer and Kit Daniels, who was sued in in an identical defamation case my firm brought in 2018 due to Daniels' false... Uh, falsely identifying an innocent man as the Parkland High School mass shooter. This guy can't get anything right. Wow. He should not be, he should not be able to speak online ever again. The third defendant is Hollywood Unlocked um, as well. Obviously, Newsmax makes a lot of sense as well here too. Um, Our client, uh, uh, why, why did I forget how to pronounce his name? I'm so... Am I racist? Chat, am I racist? I'm going to have to the name. Mauricio. Thank you, Mauricio. I never see the name Mauricio. Maybe it's because I'm racist. Who knows? Mauricio has a front fringed Edgar cut, sometimes called the Mexican Caesar. Is that a real? That's a real head. I got chat. I got anybody in here who's got the Mexican Caesar? Yes. Fuck. I've seen that cut, the Mexican Caesar. And has the name of his longtime girlfriend tattooed in graphic script on his lower neck. On the, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. Love this guy. Thank you. Thank you, Boyo. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. I appreciate you for that, buddy. But what a kind man. All he wants to do is love his girlfriend, okay? And this is what they did. The next defendants are Steven Crowder, Laura Crowder, Inc. If you're uh, unfamiliar with Crowder, and he's an obnoxious extremist provocateur masquerading as a journalist. A quick Google News search uh, will produce a glut of cringeworthy results. He called him cringe. (laughs) Oh, dude, it's over when a lawyer is calling you cringe. That's wild. On a show on his website, Crowder repeatedly published our client's photo as the shooter. Crowder told his audience they want to tell you that this was a white supremacist and not see that this is a very Hispanic looking face. Unfortunately for him, even if he got the right guy, that wouldn't make any sense because of because the most racist people out there are Hispanic men masquerading as white people. They're Hispanic boys masquerading as white boys. You've seen it. I've seen it. We've all seen it. We all know it. We all know it. 
is in here. But with the person who I want to be talking about today, who is the most important here, is actually oh, Elon Musk. Real. In a separate case, um, but a very similar case, Elon decided to hop onto the bandwagon, similar to what these guys did, but accused another man of being a neo-Nazi in a brawl that happened um, a little while ago. Elon was doing the everything he could to be able to keep the deposition that he was forced to give after he tried to force the court not to make him depose himself, uh, hidden from the public, but we got it. A couple days ago, we got it. And I slurped up the whole thing. And I'm going to tell you, this is an incredible piece of information that uh, that Elon Musk was forced to give to the court here. Uh, and that it tells us a whole lot about what, what goes on inside of this guy's very, very small brain. Huffington Post released an article on the 8th. Elon didn't want his latest deposition released. So here it is. Under threat of perjury, is Steven Crowder cringe? Is Steven Crowder, uh, under the threat of perjury, is Steven Crowder kecker cringe? Please answer the question. Yes or no? No, I knew Elon was dumb as hell, but I actually didn't know that he was this dumb and he's gotten himself into more trouble. He even realizes that he's a little stupid in this deposition. But without further ado, let's take a let's take a little look into it because sheesh, does this get wild? There's a risk that what I say is incorrect, but uh, one has to balance that against having a chilling effect on free speech in general, which would undermine the entire foundation of our democracy. Musk's owner of Twitter said during the deposition. The lawsuit against the billionaire filed in October alleges that Musk used his colossal social media platform to amplify a false far-right conspiracy theory linking a 22-year-old Ben Brody to a brawl in Oregon between a neo-Nazi group, Rose City Nationals, and the Proud Boys. I think it's just kind of wild how it's like inbred on inbred violence, not the inbred on inbred crime. You got to pick a struggle, but you're racist and you're violent too. The defense of the first amendment is so dumb. I should be able to lie and defame people and ruin their lives because if I can't, like what happened, whatever happened to the first amendment. Inbred on inbred violence. It's sad to see. It's very sad to see. But he wasn't even in the same state when the brawl happened. But his world was turned upside down when far right Twitter accounts magnified by Elon Musk falsely identified him as one of the members of one of the neo-Nazi groups and posted his own personal information, including his face, online for people to attack him. Musk amplified the conspiracy theory repeatedly to more of his uh, to all of his 180 million followers, many of them being bots. And you know, so maybe he can, maybe he's going to use that excuse. Actually, not that many people saw it because 90% of my followers are bots. So <laughs> suggesting Brody was a fresh faced federal agent pretended to be a neo-Nazi in a false flag operation to make conservatives look bad. And then he was put at the harmful event deliberately set up to misrepresent a group or a person looks like uh one is a college student who wants to join the government and another may be an antifa member but nonetheless probable false flag situation he posted on twitter yeah you gotta put this guy in jail you gotta take away his posting privileges okay free free speech may be a right but posting is a privilege and he needs it taken away from him he can't be allowed to keep it like like we we understand this right he can't be allowed to keep this up this can't happen Look what's how look at look at this guy. We can't allow this guy to keep posting. He's a villain. He's a villain in everybody's story except for his own. Yeah, Elon needs to be put in airplane mode. He does. <laughs> Thank you. Why would he say that? Literally only neo-Nazi would think like that. Yeah, it's cute. No, 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 no. Stay on stay on that thought point. Stay on that thought. Cause I think that's a good thought right there. Only a neo-Nazi would think like that. You're right. You got a point. You're you're kind of you're kind of cooking with that one. His post about this poor man actually still to this very day remains on Twitter right here. Feels like a false flag situation. The person who originally made the tweet, he deleted his shit because he didn't want to get sued by it. He didn't want to get sued. Elon though, Elon decided to keep his up because he loves free speech and defaming people for talking bad about him. He's, he literally sued hate speech watch, watchdogs for just keeping track of all the hate speech that he brought back and onto Twitter. He might legally need to keep that tweet up. He might at this point, like after he got sued, he should have deleted the tweet a long time ago. But now that he's sued, it's probably evident. So he probably is not allowed to delete it. You're right. 
and get his full testimony. We're not going to read his full testimony yet. We're just going to take a look at some of the most interesting stuff from that testimony right now. I think we'll take a look at the full testimony a little later and when it becomes relevant. But right now, we can take a look at this. During, during the deposition, he realized that he actually had no clue why the hell he was even there. And he had limited understanding on why he was even being sued in the first place. He didn't even think about it. Musk also made, made broader admissions that he was a loser and a failure when it comes to running Twitter. But we'll talk about that here in just a in, in just a moment. Just just one momento. OK, because I want to skip forward a little bit from the onset of the de of the deposition. Spiro, do you think you did anything wrong to Ben Brody as Bankston, um, who's based in Houston? Spiro interjected, saying this isn't the question that you're allowed to ask in court. It was the start of what would be a contentious back and forth between the two high profile attorneys. Spiro, who represented Jay-Z, Megan Thee Stallion and other defamation cases, and even for Elon Musk before. Uh, when the billy and he helped the billionaire actually escape getting sued remember when he called that guy from thailand a pedophile because he remember when those boys were trapped in a a cave and elon musk had his engineers at, at like tesla make a really garbage submarine that wouldn't work just just for glory and didn't just want to help them um uh, uh save those kids and one of the guys who was on, on their actual rescue team was like hey this isn't gonna work Try worrying about actually th things that would work instead of just trying to make yourself look good and use this as a PR stunt. Elon just called that guy a pedophile because he didn't like him. Literally for no reason, just because he wanted to call him a pedophile. Guy is just like a complete freak. This guy, Spiro, helped Elon skirt responsibility for saying something like that to this guy um, and trying to ruin his life just because his, his own terrible opinions of the world wasn't good enough to be able to save these kids from that hole. Um, right? You keep saying these silly, frivolous uh, things in these shakedown cases. I'll keep trying to think of Texas lawyers to bring to our depositions, Spiro told Bankston. They hate each other. These guys hate each other, okay? This is like the Krusty Krab versus the Chum Bucket, okay? And Spiro's the Chum Bucket. It's very sad stuff going on. Bankston, obviously, uh, represented the Sandy Hook parents and won $45 million in damages against um, uh, Alex Jones. He's the hero of our story. He's the hero of our story. But I want to come back to this because it's such a really interesting thing um, that was said by Elon Musk himself on the by Elon Musk himself when it comes to Twitter and something that we've known, but we didn't know if he even understood. But it seemed like he does, but he just doesn't want to say it. And this is probably why he wants to keep this deposition private, um, because this is not going to be good for his business prospects in the future, especially as Tesla is taking a nosedive right now when it comes to its um its stock price. I never put money into Tesla. I felt like Tesla wasn't going to be around for that long uh, or its stock price wasn't going to be as high. I thought it was overvalued. It seemed like that's the case since uh, since um, uh, uh, Tesla stock hasn't had a good day since 2022. But that's just me. Outside of that, let's take a look here. During his deposition, Musk admitted. Sorry. Sorry. I'm, re I'm reading this incorrectly. Musk also made broader admissions about his failures on X, which has plummeted in value. Um, over his takeover in 2022 saying may have done he saying he may have done more to financially harm Twitter than help it he confirmed that he once used a burner account on Twitter this is the first time he's admitted this okay banks also got this guy to admit to that burner account situation some of you all may have not remember this burner account situation but this is crazy okay so Elon Musk a while ago Media organizations traced a really weird Twitter account back to Elon. And the Twitter account, okay, was actually Elon pretending to be his infant son. And he was using it to badmouth the mother of his of his child, of that son specifically. He was using it to badmouth Grimes. But he tried to but he tried to pass it off as a little test. He's just so fucking weird. <laughs> I don't even know how to say it. I don't. He's just so weird. He's such a weird guy. I don't like him. He makes me kind of sick. I'm going to be honest with you. He said he's guilty of having many self-inflicted wounds. But let's take a look at one of these really weird wounds. All right. Psychotic. Lame. He's such a freak, man. Because I, I don't know if we covered this story completely, but I wanted to talk about this now because it's just so incredibly freak. And this is a complete freak behavior. Okay, the Twitter account, which Motherboard had not confirmed was Musk, uh, that was Musk, but we now know that this was Elon Musk, actually, had a series of bizarre tweets. 
he tweeted stuff and this is this is the this is the account he was imitating his toddler son okay he said do you like japanese girls in response to a tweet from a bitcoin influencer that that was praising tesla and the replies of one of elon's own tweets monday evening Musk uh, tweeted a screenshot of him logging into his own personal account and he accidentally showed uh, the profile picture of one of his many accounts and this was one of the accounts using that profile photo people quickly found out that he appears to have an account with the username um elon test member of forehand appears to be able to found one of the burn accounts and he wrote and he wrote lamau it was over it is over when he wrote lamau in one tweet the burner account replied wow to a cnbc tweet about a, a test of Tesla's self-driving capabilities. All right. On Monday evening, the account tweeted, "I'm uh, I will finally turn three on on May fourth. Must grime, must and Grimes child. This shit was born on May fourth. And another tweet, seemingly tweeting in the character of his own infant child, he wrote, "I wish I was old enough to go to nightclubs. They sound so fun." On the birth certificate of Must a uh, child's ex. After, uh, he named he named his first child X, sharing the screenshot uh, that revealed to Twitter that it revealed his Twitter alt. I mean, I wish I could pick up bitches at the nightclub. Sounds really fun. <laughs> to name a child like that seems should be punishable by death. It might it might need to be, unfortunately. Unfortunately, unfortunately, unfortunately. I don't agree with that, but I'm just saying that it's, that's something that people think. Is this a fetish? I don't know, but it's it's very strange. FTX, FTX was a. Uh, uh, was a preoccupation of the of, of the burner account which interacted with conspiracy theorists once saying that ftx was in the middle of a party of, was in the middle sorry was a middle party to laundering funds to ukraine for u.s democrats for example um uh, for example and expressed horniness he wrote i love libertarians the account tweeted not him cosplaying as his own infant child talking about libertarians. Dog, do you even know what they want to do to the age of consent? Get out, you need to get out of there. All right, jail, 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 federal, federal prison, death row inmate. <laughs> yeah, baby. That's what I've been waiting for. That's what it's all about. That's, uh, he would put his own son through such evil. He has not understood it. He's not understood Twitter's user base. And what they want from uh, their content or what advertisers want to advertise on. Sorry, but having your posts come up on like wild neo-Nazi posts and the most racist stuff you've ever seen in your entire life isn't good for business. Sorry. It's almost like uh, the Twitter wasn't ran by radical leftist communists and was ran by people who were just trying to make money. It seemed like he, even though he owns so many big businesses, it seems like he has a very low, he has a very poor idea of how to even do that. Um... Do you like Japanese girls? I wish I was old enough to go to nightclubs. Cosplaying his own toddler son. Oh, he has another account. He has another burner account called Baby Smurf Nine. Baby Smurf Nine Thousand. Why does he want? To, why does he cosplay babies? What's hap What's happening? What's going on? Why do you have to be such a freak? Why can't you be normal? Another tweet from uh, the supposed alt uh, appears to mock Signature Bank's president for leading for leading a Pride Council meeting on um on proper pronoun usage and that he wrote his pronouns are money gone nah dude that's you dude that's you who ran this company into the ground okay these alt accounts revealed a broader examination of how must use the platform and how it's astonishingly reckless yeah that's yeah reckless is definitely one word that you could use for that everyone needs a yeah yeah pff. Everybody needs a hobby. You're right. You're right. God forbid men have hobbies. Many people like post around this tweet. Okay. It's a, it's a tweet that goes, that goes like the Elon Musk test account where he cosplays as his own child. Um, that it, it goes Grimes left the king of SpaceX laughing emoji, laughing emoji. Her kids must hate her. They probably want to spend all their time with Mr. Tesla laughing emoji, laughing emoji. That's actually a fake tweet. That's actually fake. He never said that. All the other stuff about about him being like, I wish I wish I could fuck Japanese girls in a nightclub, as, like as he was cosplaying his toddler child. That stuff's real. That 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 is a fake tweet. I will have to burst your bubble on that one. My, uh, what I my what I think it's really about is getting a lot of money out of me. Elon Elon Musk said. So Elon Musk said about the the court case that he's being tried for at this moment. He's he's being 
to pose for right now. From an anti-Semitic account to Elon Musk. Uh, Musk learned of the conspiracy theory about Brody uh, from what the lawsuit describes as a fringe Twitter account with more than 30,000 followers that features extreme right-wing memes, neo-Nazi apologia, uh, and nostalgia, juvenile and cringeworthy attempts at bigoted humor, and low-effort bait tweets, delusional panics over lazy hoaxes, and a cavalcade of absurd false information. That's a, that sounds like somebody that Elon Musk would be following. I'm not going to lie. The sludge is a social media equivalent of gutter sludge. I love this. I love Mark. He <laughs> said the way he, the way he types is just, I wish, I wish I could, ex, I wish I could exude this type of energy on the daily. I wish I could exude this type of energy on the daily because it goes so nutty. This is my first tweet. Hello, devil emoji. Crypto is confusing. Only one person is following me. Sigh. No one follows me. Hello, please follow me. For the love of God, can someone follow me? I'm gonna finally turn three. Illness, mental illness. And yes, this is his real kid that he used as his own per like profile. You know what makes this even more sick? Is that he, he brought on his own child onto Twitter after he dismantled the child safety, um, child safety and exploitation unit at, at Twitter in their um uh content moderation so now twitter is is a place where a lot of people can post um you know cp and kind of get away with it which is really scary stuff but yeah that's what happens on elon's twitter and then he brought his own kid into it to, to make weirdly sexual comments anonymous an anonymous account named dr fenzor posted a picture of brody with his personal information found on his college fraternity social media page remember this is something that elon musk boosted as he banned somebody who was simply just posting the public information of where his flights were going. So it's privacy for me, but not for thee. So this, this guy's face, his name, where he goes to school, his family, all this type of stuff, his like where his home is, all that got posted on social media and boast, boosted by uh, Musk for people who were looking to like kill him as being like a Fed or false or like um, a false flag agent or something. Uh, as as he wants to protect himself by banning people who just look at international flight, look at American flight logs about where his plane is going, since that's public information where his plane goes. That's how that's how much he cares about privacy and safety on Twitter, just so you know. It also said he, after graduation, he has plans to work at the government. He just literally made this stuff up about this guy. Very odd, Musk responded. Um, as it goes, whenever Musk interacts with a post on X, it quickly went viral. In his deposition, Musk, asked, Musk was asked whether he'd seen uh, the post from Dr. Fenzer's account. Would it be fair for me to say that, other than the tweets that you interacted with, you did not secure any information about this unmasked brawler? He said he does not recall securing any other information about it. He said, uh, during the testimony, Musk criticized what he called traditional legacy news industry, uh, traditional legacy news industry, while lauding X's community notes, a tool that allows users to correct and give in, uh, additional information. He basically said that community notes is the best system on the internet ever for check for fact checking and that, and that he tried to use it in good faith. He also tried to save his ass by saying after he, after he commented and signal boosted this guy's personal information, um, and that falsely accused him of being a neo-Nazi for fun. He said he added community notes to get a community note on it, but obviously that's not how that works. Community notes isn't just like a like a thing you have to wait for an actual person to write a community note, but obviously everybody who was looking at that tweet agreed with that tweet, and there was no community note that was ever put on that tweet, ever. So this guy's, so this guy's information was just allowed to fester, um, and, and, and fester and get worse as people started to constantly make it worse and worse and worse for him uh, and his family as well. Must downplay the number of people that saw his tweet because over a million people saw his tweet. He said he doesn't really matter. We understand that the amount of people that saw this tweet um, and the people who viewed him is equivalent to 30 major league baseball stadium filled of people. And Must said, yeah, I mean, that seemed like a large number, but compared to the fact of how many people that are on Twitter, it's like it's not that many, oh, like a million people is like not a big deal. It's hit or miss, yeah. It's not, it's not a big deal that I signal boosted this to, so, to millions of people to see his personal information, calling him a neo-Nazi federal agent. I want to talk a little bit about his idea of self-inflicted wounds because they're kind of interesting. 
Um, like we've talked about how dumb this guy is when it comes to the type of stuff that he says and, do and does online. Um, and I really was wondering if he has, if he's just stupid or he's impulsive or it's kind of like stupid and impulsive. And he realizes that he's like a bad person, but he just doesn't have the strength to fix his character. He just allows himself as like a 56 year old man. He just allows himself to slip into being worse and worse and, and not, and not take accountability for not being interested in what's true and what's not and has just su been sucked into conspiracy theories um because this has allowed him to have what he, we all would call self-inflicted wounds pretending to be your own child and and, and, and and acting like it and asking and asking weirdly vaguely sexual questions online is what i is what i would call a self-inflicted wound he didn't need to do that he could have just been a normal person but he really just chose not to it's very peculiar behavior from this person he called this type of stuff that he was doing self-inflicted wounds in his 2023 biography um that was written about him though he says he hasn't read it i certainly i would say that i you know i'm guilty of many self-inflicted wounds he says i'm guilty of many many self-inflicted wounds asked asked uh, about the account by bankston during the deposition must confirm that it was his account uh but he dismissed it as just simply a little test account no, I would I would not use a coward. It was it was just used for 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 testing. I, mean, I was just testing things, testing writing tweets, I guess, and just, uh, commenting on people and begging for begging for followers or whatever. The then going back to the sort of self inflicted wounds, uh, the Kevlar shoes. I think there's uh, I think there's I've probably done I may have done more to financially impair the company than to actually help it, but certainly I I don't. I do not guide myself uh, in my post by what's financially beneficial, uh, but what I believe is interesting, important, or entertaining to the public. So he's just a little clown. He's just a little clown boy. He doesn't really care about whether or not what he posts is true. He just wants to do something that's funny or interesting. And so he just does whatever he wants. Just ask like a little silly guy. You can't get mad at a silly guy, can you? Well, you're going to have beef with a silly guy, like a little silly boy. Come on. He's your friendly neighborhood billionaire. Entertaining to the public. Yeah, so he just lives his life as a fucking clown. And... I guess he gets, he lives his life like a fucking clown and gets played by a fiddle by people who, who have ulterior motives. Yeah, the, the CEO of some of the largest companies in the entire country and in the, in the entire world, I'm just a silly little clown boy. He just wants attention. I talk about, I've said it before, I'll say it again. Elon Musk acts like if a, if like a four-year-old put money in penny stocks back in the like mid, uh, mid 1990s, then fell into a coma and woke up as the world's richest man and as an adult. And Elon Musk asked like that type of person. He got older, but he never grew up. That's the scary thing about one of the most powerful men and some of the and one of the richest men in uh, one of the richest men in the entire world. The mentality of a child. Maybe that's why he role plays a child in his spare time. Who knows? He's got that Michael, he's got that Michael Jackson disease. Crazy, ain't it? A day after Brody was falsely linked to the neo-Nazis by Elon Musk. He wrote, my family and I are just being harassed completely. I would be happy to clear up any of this information and confusion if necessary. It's just so ridiculous. I really can't believe this is happening to me uh, right now. He was basically pleading with everybody to leave him and his family alone, and he couldn't even understand what was happening. Mind you, when this happened, he was not even in the same state. He wasn't in the same state. He was just visiting his family. When this, when this happened and this went down and then out of nowhere, he was being accosted online in the street at his home and he just couldn't do anything about it. And he was just posting people, posting for people to please let, leave him alone. But obviously these conspiracy theory freaks that Elon Musk, um, uh, uh fosters everywhere he goes, obviously wouldn't let him leave him alone because that's exactly what a federal agent neo-Nazi would say. That's exactly what they would say. Huh? We have how that works out, isn't it? Nearing the end of the Nearing the end of the deposition, Bankston asked Musk if he believed that he owed Brody um, accuracy. He said, I aspire to be accurate no matter who the person is. Do you believe that you lived up to that duty to Brody or do you think you failed him? And this is where things get really bad in my personal opinion, because this is where Elon Musk proves that he's just a horrible person. He goes on to say that he does not feel guilty for what he did to Brody. He does not feel like Brody suffered at all. And he does not believe that Brody is owed an apology. And he doesn't believe that he was ever harmed after even having to lose his house and being accosted by people, him and his own family for the lies that he, that he promoted 
online for no other reason but to just be funny and silly and interesting on his failing social media account that he bought and destroyed. After his chase for validation as a grown ass man helping destroy somebody else's life because he follows the dumbest people on the internet as a conspiracy brain rotted freak. He goes on to say people are attacked all the time in the media in the online media, social media, but that rarely, but that rarely has actual meaningful negative effects on their lives. I don't think he was, I don't think he was, he has been harmfully or mean, sorry, I don't believe he had been meaningfully harmed by this. Elon Musk replied, and then he ended his dep deposition as that, as uncaring about this man or what he has gone through, what he did to him, I couldn't care less. So that's where we are right now in this deposition. There's nothing more out of this at the moment. Uh, the court case is still going on right now, but this is what's going on with these types of people. Conspiracy brain rot that is completely subsumed the conservative movement and has destroyed so many people's critical thinking abilities simply so they can just feel smart or feel interesting or feel like they know more than your average person. That greed of feeling like you're privy to knowledge that nobody else is or nobody else is willing to share leads people to leads people to instead of just believing everything the media tells you, believing everything that the media doesn't tell you, believe everything that some random guy, um, uh, shit, shit, fart, two, two, three on Twitter just randomly puts out. It's we've known it before, but at least we get a clear view of what's going on inside of this guy's head because it's not good on Don Lemon. He even talked about how Twitter was the best place for media. Now, some people may think it's a little hypocritical for me to say this. I use Twitter a lot in my in my segments, but I don't use Twitter for for news. I use Twitter to show you things that people say about news because I think it's a great platform to see what's going on inside of people's heads as people think very, a lot of people don't think that hard about the stuff that they tweet. We kind of get a sort of like raw understanding of what's going on inside of people's heads because a lot of people just don't think that hard about what like a tweet that they put out on the internet means or what it could be. That's what I, that's what I use Twitter for. Elon literally uses Twitter. He genuinely believes that Twitter is a place that, that, that gives you so much information that there's no need to fact check it. If there's no fact check on it, it must be true. That's actually something that he genuinely believes by the time he stumbles on it. If nobody else has, if nobody else has ratioed the post yet, that must mean it's true, which I think is one of the worst ways to possibly go about a user generated news platform that he likes to call it, but that's actually what he believes. And the reason because, and the reason for why he believes that is because people have been mean to him on MSNBC. And so journos and people who spend their lives and dedicate their lives to bringing news to people who are held to actual journalistic standards aren't people who you trust, but shit fart five, nine, five, nine, six, nine, XD, XD are people who you need to trust and care about because those are the people who are more likely to be speaking the truth than anybody else. That's what he actually believes. And that's how you get into the situation. And that's how he doesn't care. And that's why he doesn't care about what he actually posts because it can't hurt people like that. It's just, it's just a tweet. It's not like, it's not like any, any one of my 180 million conspiracy theory, brain rotted freakazoid followers are going to actually do anything in the real world. Sure that we've known from uh, like more and more and more recently that online content creators have been uh, have been at the epicenter of causing and fomenting violence in the country. Sure. After after neo-Nazis and far right extremists literally write down the content creators who they watch, who gave them the ideas to kill people out in the real world. Sure. Surely that can't have a real effect on the real world. Surely I, I can't possibly do something do something like that because those guys are bad people. And if, and if my preconceived notions of bad people are these types of people, then I, I can't be that cause I'm a good person. I'm fighting the good fight to, for free speech and freedom and anti wokeness. And so obviously nobody who I, who follows me or who believes something like me wouldn't harm people because I don't harm people. Do I, I've never harmed anybody. Oh, what do you mean that my content has been used to to harm and destroy other people's lives. That can't be possible because I'm good and they're bad and they're woke and I'm unwoke. So that's why I'm good. The world is black and white. And so there's no gray. I can't be black because I'm white. I'm South African. I'm not black. I'm white South African. His soul glitters like diamonds freshly mined by African slaves. 
Come on. It couldn't possibly be him. It's narcissistic delusion from a freak with a God complex and more money than he ever possibly should even be allowed to own in a, in a civil society. Money has made a God. All right. And we are now at the whims of this mad rich God using his wealth for his own personal gain and to laugh as he, as, as he uses other people's lives as his own toys and the sandbox he calls this world. Sad, disgusting freak. I only wish the worst for him. I hope this guy wins his case against him and the other guys win the, and the other guy wins his case um, against those other content creators because they need to be stopped. The only thing they the reason why they say this stuff is to be able to make money. And the only reason why they would ever stop is because they're losing money. All right. So you got to hit them where it hurts.